Hello, welcome back to the hour show. Today, before we start our show, we would like to take a minute to pay our heartfelt condolence to the family and loved ones of Ebony, one of Ghana's finest musicians in the music industry, who was called to glory yesterday. We would like to say, you know, we've lost a great person, a very outstanding and talented young lady. We pray that her gentle soul rests in perfect peace. And today, on the hour show, we have a very great figure, a legend in the Ghana music industry. And it's no other person than Nana Adumaku Nyamiche. Welcome to the show, Nana. Thank you very much. Welcome, Nana. It's, you, it's, been, a, it's been a pleasure. Um, we, we, I mean, I, I grew up, um, you know, listening to you, uh, mm -hmm. some of the, the fantastic tracks you have from Aye Ye. That's my first to, album. Well, mm -hmm. I love that track. Mm -hmm. I love that track. So, um, kindly introduce yourself to our viewers, because most of our viewers probably might know you um, in physical uh, but uh, a lot of youngsters might not know you. Uh, probably they've heard some of the, uh, you know, best tunes you've ever had in the music industry. But we would like to first give that opportunity for you to introduce yourself. All right. Thank you very much for your, you know, uh, brotherly invitation to me. I am Nana Kwame Adumaku Yamiche, native of Asante Bekwai in the eastern part of Ashanti. Uh, my music, well, life started right from, let me say, before even I was born, because maternally I inherited music from my mother, who was a very great folkloric singer. So she told me when I just started growing, because I, I, I should, I, I mimed whatever that is a tune that was surrounding me. And as she told me, when she was pregnant of me, any time she was singing, she could hear me kicking. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, naturally, I was born a, a, a musician, because my mother was a very great folkloric singer. So, if that should be enough for the meantime. Okay, how was your education like? Um, well, um, I started my formal education at our cottage. My parents are farmers. So, we had a village, not a cottage as such, uh, called Adua at... Uh, I mean, the eastern part of uh, Jakubu, a place called Jakubu. I don't know if you've ever heard of it. I've heard of that. <laughs> All right. So that was where I started my elementary. Okay. And then uh, I came to the upper elementary at Kumasi Sipe Timpum. Then uh, when I passed my common entrance, I came back home to my native town of Santibe Kwai where I started my secondary education at Bekwai SDA Secondary School. So after my secondary school, music was something that was actually naturally a focus. So were you involved in music at school as well? I did music, okay. literary basic, literary music. So I took music as my main focus. Actually, my interest of music really developed from my fundamental age. So uh, the moment I entered, well, even in elementary school, I was like, you know, in those days, uh, we sang very good hymns. Uh, at parade, I was always the tune giver. Because uh, the masters and teachers would ask who would like to give us a tune. I was the first, always the first person to raise my hand. Because uh, I could, you know, uh, sound my sonorous voice and uh, since the teachers were trying to gather their opinion about me probably you know developing to be somebody when well, that time music had not developed actually to a maturity age so um, while in secondary school I think my interest in music started developing 
So I had my O levels at the Kumasi, sorry, Mekwa SD Secondary School. Then uh, after my O levels, I really wanted to proceed on to music. So I proceeded on to the National Academy of Music at Winneba, where I did my A levels in music. Okay. Uh, that time it really you no know, existed, but now I don't think it it is anymore. Mm. Uh, so it was at Nam that I had my A levels in music. So from there, then uh, if I may like to go on, I'll stop here. Then well, we may continue. you joined you joined the Kumasi Police Band. That was after my A levels in nineteen seventy four. Nineteen seventy four. Wow, but mm -hmm. I don't think you were. Your I, mother I was. was my mom hasn't even <laughs> talked about having me here. <laughs> wow! All right, that, that was, while I was even that, that was, I was waiting for my school results at that time. So results haven't come out even yet. I was then about almost eighteen to nineteen years old. Mm -hmm. So the interest was there. So um, my uncle was a truck driver, and where he lived was very close to the Kumasi Police Depot where they had a band. So any time I hear them singing, something was actually pushing me. So that, that is when you joined. Them. And you joined it for three years. Well, uh, I, I approached them one day when they were doing rehearsals. And uh, the inspector in charge at that time was called Inspector John. And the other one was called Inspector Baini. Uh, so I approached them that uh, I was very interested uh, about what they were doing. Mm -hmm. And uh, the inspector asked me, because at that time I was a very skinny, tiny boy. So he asked me, what do you think you can do? And I said, oh, uh, I'm a very good singer. Okay. I said, oh, really? So what can you sing? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, what God gave me is from the right go that my music started developing, I started writing my own songs. I did art and literature, so poem, you know, to transform the poem into a song. These are all things you learn at the school when you go to the high levels of the music. So I had then composed some songs. Uh, when, when did you, I mean, uh, and, and I, I always say this, part, if, you, if you probably will agree, legends like Nana mm -hmm. should be celebrated almost every day. Exactly, mm -hmm. yeah. We don't need to see them go. I mean, Nana started this whole, you know, movement mm -hmm. way back, mm -hmm. somewhere in 1974. Yeah. That is just tremendous. Mm -hmm. and, and you still possess that great mm -hmm. talent. Mm -hmm. um, I've, I've managed to, you know, look at some of your music on iTunes. And, you know, I'm, I'm also privileged to have met... Um, legends like uh, Dr. Pablo mm -hmm. and a few others, mm -hmm. they were not doing that great. You have sailed through quite successfully. Mm -hmm. what, what, what happened to you? What, what, what is the secret behind your success? Well, um, <clears throat> that's what I'm telling you that musically, I think I, I, I inherited it maternal, matern, I don't know, mat, uh, maternal way. maternally yeah. from my mom. Right. So it was actually in the blood where I was growing. Was your mom a professional singer? No, no. She no. was a, just a folk singer. Okay. But uh, I come from the, if I may say that, uh, from the linguistics family of Asante Bekwai. Okay. Uh, my family, my grandfathers are the linguists of the Asante and Bekwai. Mm. So my grandfather was a chief linguist. And uh, so my mother took it. So as I was growing also, my grandfather saw actually the potentials in me. So she started grooming me how to, you know, formulate ad ages yeah. and all that. But you know, you, you know what my, my question really is, is mm -hmm. that you have become a Sussex. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, you were a literate person. You did well in your A-levels. You excelled into Europe. I mean, we're going to talk about that right. at, a few, um, at a later stage of this interview. Mm -hmm. But you have managed to become successful. Mm -hmm. I mean... You've done so well for yourself. Yeah. Most of your peers were not and are still not doing that great. Mm -hmm. What is the secret behind your success? Well, uh, right from the word go, like I said, well, I, I stopped at the inspector thing. So I took a guitar. They gave me a guitar. 
so I sang one of my compositions, maybe at a later part of the interview. I may try to sing that oh, one we'll to be so, you. We'll be so, <laughs> so, in fact, creativity is very important. And uh, I, I was, as I was growing, I was listening to some people like Nana Kwame Ampadu yeah. and mm -hmm. Master Kwabra Kwabua. Okay. Because these were the people who were really at the highest peak of their music at that time. So, really, the way they, you know, framed you know, they phrased their music with an hard ages. That is the kind of, you know, background I had. So, but I really had an idiosyncrasy as I was growing. I really wanted to portray myself like something. So, but uh, when I joined the, the, when I sang the first song and the inspector heard my voice, he said, oh, this boy, you have potential, so we will enlist you. So, well, I followed the band for almost three years, the Kumasi Police Band. Then uh, along the line, the armed forces of Ghana forced you into it. They saw me, we, we went on to a TV yeah. show, and then they took me to join the, the army. army band. Okay. Okay. From there, that is where my actual life started shining. Because uh, they were very happy to see somebody who could really write and arrange and sing his own things, which was not so common. Those days at my tiny age, I was barely 25 years at the time, just a 24 getting to about 25 years. So, in fact, I was given the opportunity to really write my songs and then rehearse with my band and we started playing them publicly. Mm -hmm. So, it was the same Nana Kwame and Purdue the first who listened to my band, the Black Berets, mm -hmm. at Tiptoe at that time. Mm -hmm. I didn't even know he was in the midst. So when I was singing one of my songs as a repertoire of my band, then after a recess, he called me and told me, those songs I'm singing of my band, mm -hmm. who made the songs? Then the leader of the band at that time called Sergeant Bosman said, that is this boy's own compositions. And then another producer said, oh, this I agree. So do you have any intentions of recording? At that time, I had no idea. So Nanam Padu introduced me to a record company leader called Mr. Pura Gapophone. So they summoned my band to the studio to start to rehearse and it was time to really go to record. So was it at that point that you became a professional musician? My first album that he hinted, Kanyamae, it was I recorded ten songs on okay. that album and the moment that album came out well, Ghanaians just held it to a, a highest esteem that I wasn't even anticipating mm. that a first song could do that wonderful. Now, because of the arrangement, my horn orchestration, the way I really projected my song for the first time, it really shot me through the ranks. And well, uh, from the word go, God helped. Well, it is God who directs everything. So, well. Uh, who, who was managing you at the time? Uh, and how is your management now in I, terms of... I was in the band of the Ghana Armed Forces, which is the Reiki Regiment Band. Uh, so, but uh, during the recordings, the commanding officer at that time, called Major Ohinasari, told me that he had wanted me to put the Black Berets Band name on that album so that I was a Lance Corporal at that time so that I could be promoted to a sergeant or any rank that I think I want. Because mm -hmm. he had a belief that there's that songs that we were rehearsing. And any time we start to rehearse, the whole barracks, the whole army will come and I mean, surround and listen to the kind of music I was playing. But how do you get your music to be, you know, sold on Amazon, iTunes, I'm, I don't know whether you are aware of it. Well, uh, your, no, your, music, no. your music is quite international. <laughs> I know. How, how do you do it? Uh, because I, even the current youth are not out there mm, the way I... Because I, I was quite surprised. Oh. Some of the oldest tracks you have, full album, well, and, and you keep them protected. Yeah, how, by, by oh, God's oh, grace. Yeah. Uh, this song, my first, second album, we know, was, uh, were big hits. So, uh, well, when I entered into Europe, uh, no, into Ivory Coast. Because at that time, uh, there was no uh, corporate society kind of things mm -hmm. in Ghana. Mm -hmm. And those days, people were buying albums. People, any Ghanaian that hears a song on the radio would go to the shop and buy them. So, well, money was really, you know, coming at that time. 
So when I entered the Ivory Coast, then I was introduced to their music society called the Bill Reader. So uh, there's a, a guy called Saches. He was from Togo, no, from Benin. And because my music was all over the place in the, every Ivory Coast shop you go, because there were a lot of Ghanaians there. So everywhere you went, I was surprised to hear my music all over in Ivory Coast. I went to Togo, it was there. So, oh, so he told me, when Ghanaians told him that I was the person who made that song, he said, what? So because my arrangement and my style was quite different from the high lives he used to hear. Mm -hmm. So he said, okay, he think, uh, he knows more about West Africa and Ghana songs, and those days were not registered. So he took me to be with that to register every song that I have written. So I registered all these songs. So by the grace of God, the music started being protected right from the Ivory Coast in 1983. So at that point, did you have um, a solid man management team behind you? Or were you doing things by yourself? No. Uh, there's a long story about that. Probably, maybe time will we, not we, permit We are going me. to get into that. <laughs> yes. It's slow and gradual. Yeah, but, but, we want to know everything about you. The, 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 the essence of you kind of protecting your music yeah. and selling it, because regardless of you know, what they are doing now with music, mm -hmm. you are still moving and yes. selling your tracks. Yes. Because, be, the, because the songs are, have been registered, so every radio the whole of the world that plays my song. So Biruda is linked to Sassam in France. It's a big music society who protect music rights. Okay. Okay. So the luck I had that really generated income for me to live as a musician was how my songs were registered in Africa. Coast. Mm. By that time, no Ghanaian song has ever been registered. If there were maybe the uh, professional ones like Usibisa mm. and the others, those are big old mm. legends, they mm. were different, but at my time, and those pick, uh, pop songs and then uh, hit songs we were hearing in Ghana, they weren't you know, officially registered. Mm. So every radio station that plays my song, either in Ghana or any coast of Africa, Birida and Sassam will collect the royalties and put them directly into my accounts. Excellent. So in fact, Excellent. my songs have been protected from that time. I, I managed to just you know, get you from Brazos, to, and I think it's uh, yeah. quite a journey. Yes. And you got here last night. Yes. Your your team, uh, are they back in Ghana, or do you always record in Brazos or in France, or how how is the journey like at the moment? Yeah, we will come to those phase. Uh, when I, I from Ivory Coast that I entered to France mm -hmm. by the help of the United Nations, mm -hmm. uh, I was settled by the United Nations with music instruments. So I picked some you know, hands that I formed my group with. And in fact, from that day till now, I have never lost touch of those people. Most of them are foreigners, aren't they? French, how, how do they, Dutch. Yes, how well, do they? Music is a literal language. Okay. If you understand it, everybody can read it. So the luck I had is I had good foundation musically. Right. So I could transpose and write my music and arrange them. So irrespective of wherever they are coming from, mm -hmm. when I push my, my piece there, mm -hmm. they can read and play. Okay. Okay. Yeah. In their language? In, music is a language, universal language, yeah. but those who have learned literal music can mm -hmm. always understand it. Okay. So that's how I'm able to play twice, irrespective of where they are coming mm -hmm. from, because I can write my music into you know, into pieces, you know, transpose it properly and music structure. That is a very unique talent, isn't it? Well, <laughs> I had a good preparation from the National Academy of Music. Mm -hmm. So that was a good foundation. foundation that yeah. really, you know, you know, as a pivot, pivot point for me to really, you know, spread what, up. What, in, in, at, at the moment, what do you see going on in the Ghana music industry? You think we have a chance to excel and expand our territory to probably last long? just like you have made it to at this point? Well, Do you see it getting that far? There have been a lot of evolutions mm -hmm. in the music. Well, not only in Ghana. I think the music have been changing from types to types and categories. But the, there is one thing that I think can never be denied. 
high life, the word high life that Ghana, you know, portrays as our main, you know, uh, you know, like say a title of a uh, songs or a, a cultural song, mm -hmm. is something that was well, you know, planned and put together by the British. If we should go into music history a bit, I could go back to there, but maybe time will not permit us yeah. to go to that place. Uh, the, 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 the young guys, well, it's their era. So different type of people want to listen to some kind of music songs. But I think... Do you have a favorite at the moment? Who is your favorite artist currently in Ghana? Ojun Tufuna no Kwame Mpadu still alive. <laughs> he is my <laughs> idol of music and I still pray to God for him to live longer because I've learned a lot of how to formulate and phrase my idioms. Now, those, you are legends and we, there is no boundary to even <laughs> that and nobody can even come. The youth at the, the youth. moment. Who would you want to work with? Well, or who would uh, you think would have you, a peak of... Okay, while in Holland, mm -hmm. that was a time Lumba and uh, Nanda Champong, you know, also coming up. At the time I put my third album up, Ajwa Prama, that was the time they, also, they were also coming up. So in fact, uh, we've been in touch with each other. So we listen to each other. Uh, if they need any advice, they ask me. Uh, I listen to Nana Champo, I listen to Lumba uh, because, uh, well, they have their style, yeah. you know, and that is music is an era, you see, that is it evolves, it evolves. So I think these young guys and up and comings, well, whatever they are singing, well, the only advice I can advise is, is about something I really don't like, which I think we should music is a food of the soul we possess and it's a big lesson also to our up and coming the youth profanity actually doesn't pay mm. but it seems well many people don't care much about it but for that respect and existence of music to be to prevail i think there must be decent lyrics mm -hmm. rhythms can be anything what is the duty of musica? Is the, the, the well, musica have come to live. Well, it, musica was formed after I have left Ghana. I left Ghana at a very tender age. I was very young. I haven't attained 20 years. You know, because when I was leaving Ghana, I was barely 28. I was getting to my 29th year. So musica came to exist, and then the, uh, the other societies have come, which I think they are doing their bits, but. There are still more work to be done to protect the interests of the Ghanaian musician you know, so that they can really live like you know, musicians. You know, there are a whole lot of things to be done. Well, I think they are doing their bit, but uh, there's still a job to be done to help our brother musicians to live you know, properly as musicians. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. And I just want to know, you know, when I listen to your music mm -hmm. and listen to Nanam Pedi's music as well, mm -hmm. You can see that most of your songs, not, not even most, like all of your songs are played by live band. You yeah. use live instruments. Yes. And in our generation now, mostly it's more of Play computerized bands. Yes. music we're well, hearing. That's what I'm saying. Uh, the music have evolved from stage to stage. Mm -hmm. And uh, you see, we're living in the media world now, the social media things. Uh, the way I was brought up, the way I was trained, uh, I'm, I, I'm made to believe that live music never loses its touch. Yeah. So if great musicians like Michael Jackson, Leonard Richie, and all this, Steve Wonder, the great music you hear, they are live performed music. Well, the computer things, yes, it says cash, like a cash for a crop. They come and they die off mm. quickly. but music that are properly designed and recorded and played they are evergreen they live forever they never die you know like well how many years ago i recorded my first album i'm still earning money from it, from it yeah exactly. you see but the casual ones well there are many 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 uh, singers than musicians okay do, do you want to bisakede bisakede 
um, a young artist. I don't know whether you've heard of him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've heard of him. What do you think of him? Is he in your line of genre of music? Well, I'm saying it's their era. They are doing what they can do. So I, 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 don't, I don't condemn anybody. But I, I just advise them to, you know, try to improve their standard of music, to let it be appreciable, both young, young and old, you know. That's how the music can survive. But, well, just every, naturally everybody is born a singer. Oh yeah, that's mm -hmm. what I wanted to ask because you did mention that. Mm -hmm. But you not musicians everybody and is born a musician. There are different between a musician and a singer. So you play all the instruments. Well, I mean, what, what sort of I, instruments do you play? My main instrument is guitar. Okay. But I understand all the instruments. I can score and write for all the instruments to write, to play. Because I I know bits of those, but I'm specialized. Are you not guitar. worried that at this venture we don't even have? Probably a museum for legends like you in Ghana. We, you can look across the, the border to Nigeria and look at Fela, mm -hmm. and I think yeah. he celebrated when, you know, even in schools, probably they, are, you know, they teach about him. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Do you think Ghana government should do much more in terms, because I think there are music courses or lessons. Um, in schools, uh, but yet they don't even, it doesn't really, uh, you know, they don't really mention you guys, uh, you, you, the actual uh, fighters for the, for the music from the very beginning. Well, uh, like you said, Nanampadu, I mean, we, we hardly hear of him, um, yeah, and he, he's still alive, isn't he? So. Yeah, Nana is alive. God bless him to, to live longer. Uh, government. Well, our, from what I know, I didn't see Kwame Nkrumah, but I benefited from a lot of infrastructure that he laid, like the National Academy of Music in Uniba. Had it not been Kwame Nkrumah, I don't think Ghana would have had that music institution. But unfortunately, subsequent governments that followed did not help. help. So this the, music yeah. industry just melted into a thin Do you air. think there should be a museum for, of that nature for you and, and the other legends? Oh, the, yeah, well, the, the, for the, me to walk into a museum with a kid or and explain, oh, you remember Nana Dumakonya Michel? He's still alive doing good. Nana still alive doing good. Definitely. These are some of the. This is you know, something the government should really think of. Yeah, because, because when you when you walk into Canary Wharf and you see the white describe even the plants and where they come from and who invented and yeah, you know cropped it or definitely. what uh, what is missing in our industry? Well. Uh, the, the, like you uh, rightly said, government must really get involved, you know, because it's the portraying of the whole country's culture yeah. that the musicians, created, creative musicians are really portraying. I write rhythms. I create rhythms. After I have sung my song, my album is gone. Many, 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 many young musicians take a lot of my rhythms, just put their words on them. And they make a living. Well, these things have to be recognized. Like Nanam Padu, Master Kwabra Kobwa, who, are there, who is dead and gone, his soul rest in peace. They have created so many things that need to be recognized. Because we walked on their trends and, you know, created ours. So the youth, most of them, is very, very honestly one thing in music that musicians must be very honest and say this and that and that and that helped me to do this and that. But many musicians take uh, the whole credit to themselves. But I can tell more than 70 or 80 percent of songs that are going on in the society of Ghana that are my creativities. But that's why we took the lead. Some people took lead and we came to follow. So that's no problem. But give the credit to like I always will give it to Nanam Padu and Master Kabra Kabra because I grew mm. listening to them. I didn't be exactly like them, but upon moving on their trends, I came out of my idiosyncrasies which, to identify mm, myself. Yeah, which is quite phenomenal because very few celebrities like yourselves will mention any other celebrity well, that is in their the, interviews. The sincerity yeah. is not there. Be honest. Music must be honest. 
you see, if, if you're really a true musician, you've got to be honest. You know, I mean, why? If one didn't come, how could two follow? You see, so we shouldn't deny that fact that some people took the lead and upon listening to them, yes, music is a motivation. The atmosphere in the air, some past people have created them. You listen to them and if you are creative, the moment I listen to one bar, I can progress upon it to get about 120. Naturally, God has given you the sense of creativity. Mm -hmm. That is how it works. If I haven't created my own, you know, uh, uh, phrase to put my harmony or music, harmonic movement on them, sometimes I hear any music. I listen to everything. And by listening to this, you know, atmosphere in the air, you know, triggers my mind. Though, upon this first phrase you've got, you can progress upon it to the age 16, 32, to whatever you can go. So, music is something in the atmosphere. It is art. Would you all come together and do a concert? By the grace of God. I have been absent a long time, but I'm coming, I think. Uh, Your new album is, very soon is, is it's coming out very It's soon. in the pipeline and it's we'll, going we'll to... We'll be glad to produce it. We will project it here, <laughs> right here on your program. No, no, you, do, you did mention about giving credit to who credit is due. Yes. And when you look at uh, our generation now in the music industry, there is a lot of backbiting going on, yeah. especially on social media. You mm -hmm. hear this musician against that one, this yeah. one with that one in their songs, mm -hmm. in their, in their <laughs> videos online. Mm -hmm. Was it the same in your time? Well, not as I can flash my mind back, but uh, that actually shouldn't be. Mm -hmm. You see, uh, I don't think there's any competition. If you're really a true, excuse me, creative musician, and you think you have a focus and a direction musically. I don't see why you should have qualms with, you know, whoever is trying to do what. Yeah. If you really, you have a focus, you know, it's about this, uh, a glass of orange that I want to sing about. It's my creativity and I'm sure I can portray it or project it to be something viable mm -hmm. to the society or the public of Ghana, you know, I put it in the market and the public will judge it. So where is the competition? If money comes out of that, it comes to me. You know, so if B also creates about this cup and she's, he does it well and it sells well, the money goes to him. Where is the, pro I mean, the competition and the insults kind of thing? I, I didn't see that in my generation, to be honest. So I can hear it. I know what is going on in the society yeah. of Ghana now, which is really, uh, it, need, it needs to be addressed. It must be addressed because uh, it is not the best way of... Uh, Do you think that will change? Well, if the people want to change, they can change. We are human. Mm. God has given us a sense you know, of thinking and creativity. So if you really want to change, you can change. Like the Bible said, well, if you offense and God forgives you, you have to go and sin no more. So, but if you continue sinning, then what, what was the use of asking for the forgiveness first and foremost? Yeah. So I think people can change if they want to change. People Else, can change if they want to change. If they want to change. Want to change. Okay, at this time, Nana, we would like you to give us one of your songs on a cappella. We really want to hear your voice. <laughs> mm, so I've got various type of songs, so different types of songs. So which of them in particular do you want? Aye. Any preference? Aye. 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 Yeah. Which was my first album. Yes. Now, this was the song I told you I played to the police band that they took me on. Exactly. So you're and playing it to it me. The, it was the first song. <laughs> the They're not going to take you on this time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we are going to. I'm taking you on. <laughs> All right. So that is Aie, which is a song I wrote back in secondary school. And uh, because, uh, I, like I told you, I really wanted to portray my song in a different type of a way. So I thought... Uh, as I was growing, uh, well, I'd say I didn't see Kwame Kuma, but I heard about what the great things he did for our country, the, like other head of states in Africa also. So it occurred to me that put them together and then give them a credit or praise in them. So I was. Yasini Paya Papa was a year. Anya Napuaku Kompo did you in Yamia? Anya, ain't you other senior? 
Sama yo papa na sawa ni ma ye ni mi boni ayo seno ni peni ayo kura inti oda seni ayo sama yo papa na sawa ni ma ye ni mi boni ayo seno ni peni ayo kura kwa ya waji wo na mama fomesi yamfano kwa ya wa o o kwa mfu boni nswa watano ya fomu mama fomu ma kwa mfu pako mabatu no no minu ano mesi yanya ne mumu diye na de wiasi mo ha ye wo ya. Any old people be new, be I. Nanny, I won't any year. I won't any year. Ain't your saddle for that, I come in crumme. Gunner, man, penina, oh, coning try. President John Mokenata. Can your man penina, man, for a woe coning show. Emperor Haley Salassie. Ethiopia, man penina, man, for Miss Warren's way, who coning try. Adma kwenye mchaji ntufuwa, misisi menye mwa ya na minia ye. Ubiye papa, misi mwami ya nkame, enu ya nam. Na misi sabi, sabi, sabi mpredu ya sa. Abuwa kukompono, anu msiyo ya nwadi na nwa chiresro. Eya na sama ya waka, nese mwvye ni ya uredi ya yamano. Na uu ni pada seni. Uni pada seni ye. Kadi ya unu ya biya yama uwa, se wanyi na ye, nyini boni ya ye. Seno ni peni ya ye. Wow, this is amazing. Oh, 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 because I couldn't go to Ghana at that time that I wrote that song because my brother's wife called Ajoy Piraman died. In fact, I was in the studio recording my album. That wasn't even part of the songs. And a telegram came while I was in the studio working with my band. Then the, when I read the telegram, uh, it read, your brother has lost his wife and uh, and uh, fortunately and unfortunately that girl I drew from man I was while I was in the army when my brother wanted to get along with that girl he came to the Gonda barracks with this girl to tell me brother this is a lady I want to stay with I said, oh God bless about three weeks time then my problems in Ghana started so I didn't see them again all what I heard when I was in exile, that this girl had died. So in fact, the, creativ the creativeness just came to, to me when I read the, uh, mm. the telegram. In fact, I was really, you know, touched. He had a, a child, he had a first child, and the second child, she died, you know, and left the baby. So my mom took the child to bring the baby up. So, in fact, this was all in the telegram. So, that really triggered my mind to just write it right in the studio. And God being so good, Joel Aka, the living yeah. legend, Joel yeah. Aka was in Holland at that time. Okay. So, he came to the studio with his group while I was recording. So, when I read this telegram, but tears really you know, started dropping on my eyes. So, he said, and now we, we have we heard that you are recording and we've come to watch you because they all knew I was in exile. So mm. when they were in Amsterdam, they heard I was in the studio, they wanted to come and see me. And that was the very time that I've read, finished reading this telegram. So in fact, uh, I told them uh, the bereavement of my brother's beloved uh, uh, wife. So uh, they all no, just gave me their condolences. So I just threw the guitar the engineer and, and started singing the way the song came i sang it only once and that was the recording you heard so this wow. one you did not even write it down it just That's came true. like that no no we are going to so, give it yeah no 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 no, 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 no we're not going to do that <laughs> we are going to reserve it all right that's fine at the end that's all right okay we want right. to because obviously a lot a lot of people want to hear that song but i'm gonna use it as a teaser that you have to keep <laughs> that's all right to the end you heard it from one <laughs> and only legend nana mm. aduma we'll see you after the break thank you very much 
Maintaining a presence at the forefront of a global issue with the desire to help others come to a resolve in personal and business affairs is why Andy D. Legal and Immigration Associates was established. The undying quality of being in the known at the brink of change sums up the founders' envisage objectives, which continues to keep the company upbeat and current among its varying competitors. We are located at 44 Broadway, Stratford, E15, 1XH. Our telephone number is 0203-1300-751.